everybody. This is Ableton Certified Dubspot Los Angeles instructor, Thavius Beck, here with a brand new tutorial. As you can see, we're in my home studio right now, and what I'm gonna show you is something centered around using some Max for Live devices with Ableton Live. We're gonna focus primarily on the LFO device that comes with the Max for Live Essentials Live Pack. This is a, an idea that was inspired in part by my colleague, Chris Petty, and also by one of my students, Rory P, out of Michigan. Special shout out to him. And uh, we're gonna set this up pretty shortly and uh, show you what it's all about. So, let's get started. So right now, uh, as you can see, I have a live set. In this live set, I have some drums that I was working with and uh, a bunch of different synth sounds I was kind of playing around with. Uh, right now, I'm primarily focused on the drums. So let me just go ahead and play this so you can hear what we're working with. Okay, and I got a cool little atmospheric sort of windy sound here. So there's a lot of space in this beat to add some, you know, some cool textures. And what I was thinking would be a cool way to do that would be to take the simpler instrument, which tends to be looked at as, you know, one of the more simple devices in live, no pun intended, not really. <laughs> but compared to sampler especially, when you're looking at the audio playback devices that uh, live provides, uh, simpler is definitely the less robust of the two. Yet, there's a lot of things that we can do with a simpler device by using some of the Max for Live devices to modulate some parameters within simpler. So we're gonna look at this and uh, I'll walk you through this whole technique. All right, first thing we're gonna do is grab a simpler device here. And again, simpler is an audio playback device as a MIDI instrument in live. Uh, we can drop one sample in here and play it back at numerous pitches. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go into my own folder of samples and I'm gonna grab one of these samples. Let's go ahead and hear what this sounds like. Yes, I like that. We're gonna take this sample and we're gonna drop it into Simpler. And uh, I'm gonna adjust the start point really quickly and using my trusty launch pad controller, I'm gonna play this. All right, so we're able to take this sample, play it at different pitches. Um, when we play it at different pitches, it'll be playing at different speeds because we're just playing back the audio. Uh, nothing is being time stretched, okay? Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to use a Match for Live device in order to turn this Simpler into something that's a bit more granular synth-like. When we're talking about a granular synth or something that's emulating that behavior, what we're talking about doing is using a small grains of a sample, okay? Very, very tiny grains, very small sections of a sample. And by playing those, looping them, uh, we can basically time stretch this sample, okay? So we're gonna kind of emulate that behavior and we're gonna use one of the Max for Live devices, the Max for Live LFO audio device. So let's grab the LFO and drop it after Simpler. Now, what does LFO stand for? LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. And this Low Frequency Oscillator generates a waveform which can be used to modulate a parameter on some other device, all right? One common usage of an LFO is to modulate the filter cutoff frequency on a bass synth uh, to create the famous dubstep wobble type sound, okay? Most of you are familiar with that usage of an LFO. In this case, we're gonna do something a bit different. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take this sample and I'm gonna enable my loop in Simpler. All right, and I'm gonna create a very, very small loop. We're gonna adjust the loop length here, make a little tiny, tiny loop, all right? And when I say tiny, I mean really, really tiny, okay? If we're gonna to try to emulate uh, the behavior of a granular synth type instrument, uh, we wanna deal with a very small loop length, okay? Uh, something that is gonna sound more like a grain of sound. If I trigger one of these notes, okay, that's pretty small, all right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our LFO device here and we're gonna map this to the start point in Simpler. What that'll do is it'll use this waveform, which is a sine wave, okay? And this is gonna modulate the start point. So as the sine wave in our LFO goes up, the start point will move forward, have a more positive value. As this goes down, the LFO, the slope goes down, the start point will move backwards and have a more negative value, all right? So I'm gonna hit the map button here. And once I map this LFO to the start point, you're gonna see the start knob is gonna move in a similar fashion to the waveform being generated by this LFO. Let me zoom out here so you can really see. All right, now we can see the start parameter is going crazy. If I play one of these notes now, we're basically scrubbing through the sample very, very quickly, all right? The reason why is because the sync rate of my LFO is pretty fast, all right? Right now it's set to four hertz. I'd like to slow this down so that this loop length, all right, so that we move more slowly through this sample. So let's go ahead and adjust our rate and go for something really, really slow. Now you can see as I'm adjusting the sync rate here, you see visually uh, the difference in the LFO, all right? When the sync rate was 
much faster, you can see we're moving through the LFO much more quickly, all right? This is a sine wave, so you can see we're going through the peaks and valleys much more quickly. As I reduce the rate, all right, you see there's a much more gradual increase and decrease until we get to the point where you can barely really see the crest of that wave. Now you see how slowly we're moving through the sample. Let's hear the difference in the sound. <laughs> Okay, now that's pretty cool, but it also sounds like it's kind of popping a bit, all right? And the reason why is because we're dealing with a very, very small loop, but we haven't uh, turned on the crossfade for the loop, all right? So if we turn this up a bit, this will basically crossfade the beginning and end of the loop, which should help uh, get rid of those pops that we're hearing. Much better. We're basically scrubbing through the sound, moving slowly backwards and forwards through the sound, and creating more of a granular type synth sound. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways we can maximize these max for live devices. Using the max for live LFO, we've been able to take a relatively simple waveform, drop it into simpler, and turn it into more of a granular synth. For more information on techniques and tutorials such as this, as well as our classes in Los Angeles, New York, and online, check out dubspot.com. My name is Davies Beck, Ableton Certified Trainer and DubSpot Los Angeles Instructor, signing off. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.